It's the moments following my death that I felt most alive. The pain had subsided. That was a good thing. The flesh was back in my bones and the weight of the world was off my shoulders. Thank God no more hiding the swords. Now if only I knew the plan. You know, I never thought that I would be the one begging for my redemption. Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, please. Well, I'll play for you. It is what I did best, some good old-fashioned rock and roll, and if it's to your liking, I might enter through your gates. You know, it's not for me to go out like some old dog or something. It's not my style. I am big and fast and hot. Old flamers like me aren't extinguished. Not, not like this. In the July 2015 Nursing Science Quarterly Journal, Rhea Karada Mojica explores becoming one with the universe, finding a silver lining and dying. She asserts that our purpose is to find a way to be remembered after we pass. American rock legend Freddie Mercury certainly achieved this as he revolutionized the way HIV and AIDS are viewed in the country and around the world. Playwright Charles Messina imagines Mercury and the moments following his death reflecting on his life and the disease that took it. Mercury, The Afterlife and Times of a Rock God by Charles Messina. Well, love was always the thing. Ever since I was small, it's been my pursuit in life to find it to capture it, to tie it up, and never let it go away. Why must it go away each time? Well, Father was always traveling too frequently to give me the love that I needed. And Mother, well, she tried very hard. Her only fault was that she wasn't Father. And you know, the servants waited on me hand and foot, but what were they to do? Could they lay beside me each night and pray with me and pat my little head? That's not, that's not a servant's job. The school, St. Peter's, all boys. I had to dress myself, bathe myself, wipe my own ass all for the first time. It was terrifying, you know. Where were the servants then? when I truly needed them. Well, the older boys, I love to watch them play, but those same boys could be so hurtful. You know, from the moment I arrived, they started in with the, the donkey jokes, and then they took to my name. Well, I hated my name. My name. My name. It's Farouk Vulsara. Yes. Yes, Freddie will be fine. I learned early on, dude. Big girls don't cry. Grin and bear it. That's the way. No matter how much you're hurting inside, you can never show it. And so Freddie it was. I arrived to London as Freddie Vulsara. I felt better, no doubt, but things were different. I hated it at first, you know, it was cold and overcast, but different was good. The music was one thing, you know, I dabbled in music, but in those days, being an artist meant living in squalor, sleeping on floors. Okay, maybe I had some big ideas. But it wasn't until I met Brian May, Roger Taylor, and John Deacon that I found anybody foolish enough to listen. I haven't really thought about that. I guess I don't really think about my God. After I'm gone, are they going to remember me? It's up to them after I'm dead. Who cares, right? I don't. I don't. After
after all. This is rock and roll we're making. Or had you forgotten? After all, a party's a party, and Freddie Mercury had some parties. You know, I was happy just to be up there playing along and, and strumming my little guitar. This, this guitar, it won't... It won't play the chords that I want it to play! Do you remember the first time you saw Freddie Mercury? So much life, so much fun, and you, you couldn't take your eyes off of me. And I went along with it all for, for fame and fortune's sake. But let's get back to love. I'm possessed by love. Then again, isn't everybody. Problem is, my love was dangerous, but I guess who wants their love to be saved? Maybe you heard, I love men. So what? I loved being in love. I ran wild with life. What, sex me? My dear, you can't be speaking of me. You've confused who I am with what I do. No, the truth is I loved one man with all my heart. And only one man. He stayed out of the spotlights and away from the cameras. Why should I have shared him with you? Whenever Queen would throw actor show parties and the press was within stalking distance, I would have to walk arm in arm with, with an old friend, Mary. And, and I felt terrible, but my darling Jim, he never said a word. Now, now, when I found that first sore on my back, I knew it was the end. But I didn't want to slow down. I didn't want to stop working. I wanted to go out straight to the guillotine, just like Marie Antoinette. Oh, they all cared so much, didn't they? You know, they blame me on one hand, but they exalt me on the other. Oh. Why didn't you say so sooner, Freddy? Why didn't you do something more, Freddy? They'll never understand. It was my luck, no, my debt, to do with as I please. And you know, it's bad enough that it attacked me. But, but why, Jim? I knew right away, but he didn't want to tell me because he thought I would feel responsible. But I knew what I had done to him. And it tore me apart. I can't buy immortality. I know that. Mature people than me have tried and been turned away, I'm sure. But how about I do what I do best? Because I could sit here and beg, but I do fear you would lose all respect for me and I for myself. So I have a proposition. One last performance. One for the ages. 